In this tutorial, we'll explain how to create a herringbone pattern using one of Railclone's built-in macros. This technique is very useful for floors and paving, and because all the necessary calculations are performed for you automatically, it's also very quick and easy to set up. So to get started, you'll just need a closed spline to define the outline of your floor or paving area, and at least one object you'd like to distribute in a herringbone pattern. Then you can create a new rail clone object and open the style editor to follow these steps. So add a new A2S array. Create a new spline node. Go to the node's properties and use the object picker button to select a closed spline from the scene. Wire this spline node to the generator's clipping spline input and then go to the generator and enable extend XY size to area. When this option is enabled, the array is automatically sized to fill in the spline and clip the geometry around the perimeter. Next, import geometry to rail clone by adding a new segment node and using it to pick an item from the scene. Switch to the macros tab and add a segment to herringbone macro to the graph. This macro automatically adjusts the segment's rotation, translation and padding to create a herringbone pattern. No fiddly maths are required. And then finally, wire the segment to the macro and then wire the macro to the generator's default input. A herringbone button is now created and, well, that's all there is to it. We could finish the tutorial here, but let's take it a little further and add some randomization to the textures too. In the last macro lesson last week, we added a rail clone color map to the material's diffuse input and used it to randomize the value to create some variation in the textures. Exactly the same thing can be done for flooring too. And to do it you'd open the material editor and find the material applied to the rail clone object. Wire a new rail clone colour material between the existing diffuse map and the material. Enable tint and change the gradient from white at one end to black at the other. Change the blending mode to multiply. A random value picked from this gradient will now be used to multiply the values of the diffuse texture. You can control the strength of this effect using the random strength minimum and maximum values, so I'd leave the start to 0 and go between 20 and 40 for the maximum. You can even use the same technique for the maps in the roughness input to subtly randomise the reflective properties of the boards. If you're using V-Ray, you can go even further and randomise the UVW offset for the textures for even more variety. And to do this, you'd go back to the Railclone style editor. Then, add a UVWX form modifier between the segment and the generator. Enable random offset and enter minus one scene units for the minimum and one scene unit for the maximum in the U and the V parameters. This will shuffle the texture on both these axes for each plank. And you now have a nice, easy to create flooring style. And best of all, the whole thing is easy to edit. If you'd like bigger planks, simply select the source object and change the dimensions. Or if you'd like to swap the base model, you can do that too and the whole style updates automatically. We hope you found this useful and stay tuned next week for the next Macros instalment.